Pike. Let's begin. I'll be honest. This was a game that I wasn't actually going to review, because I don't have any knowledge of the sport it's based on at all. To my surprise though, it's extremely easy to pick up and play, and is actually quite fun, so I thought I'd share my thoughts on it anyway. The game requires two move controllers to play, and they control very well here, especially for a sports game, and you can actually play while seated. Standing is really the better option, but it's absolutely 100% playable, whilst in a seated position. The main aim of the game is to score a touchdown. Each match begins in the last two minutes of the game, so it's a race to get to the end of the field as soon as possible to score a touchdown. To do this you can run down there, but you will have to avoid the other team. It's quite comical seeing them run, or should I say bounce towards you, and the depth on them as they do so is incredible. The game really does have some sharp graphics. Not only can a member of the other team stop you in your tracks from in front of you, but they can also stop you from behind. This can feel a little unfair at times, as you don't see it coming, but on the other hand, it ensures that you're constantly taking in everyone's position on the field. The best way to move larger distances is to throw the ball to your teammates. If they catch it, or in this case, if it sticks to them, they will start to run with it, until they either get a touchdown or are taken down by another player. If a player takes them down, you will spawn at their position, and you will be allowed to run or throw the ball again. If they don't catch it though, and the ball hits the ground, you will have to take your turn again. Throwing the ball feels very realistic, so it is usually your own fault if it doesn't go towards them. If you do chuck the ball, but not directly in line with them, it can feel like luck whether they catch it or not, as sometimes they will move to the best position to catch it, and other times they won't. It creates some thrilling moments when they pull through, but some frustrating ones when they don't, especially with the very limited amount of time that you're on. If a member of the other team intercepts one of your throws and catches the ball, you will spawn right back at the starting position. Every throw in this game really does matter. Even when it comes to successfully passing the ball to one of your teammates one after another, as doing so will reward you with a flaming ball. This makes your team move faster and also prevents the other team from being able to intercept a throw. You're certainly rewarded for playing well in this game. Your other team members are completely AI controlled in the actual game, but you can set the routes they take across the field. You can store up to four different paths and each one can be flipped horizontally. You can either press a button on a move controller to change the path during the start of your turn in a match, or you can actually use voice recognition. The voice commands worked for me sometimes, and other times they didn't, but considering it was quicker to simply press a button to change the team's movements, I did find it the better way to play. The game overall is very arcade-like. As soon as you get a touchdown, you will be up against a new team, and the match once again is in the final two minutes. Just before this though, you will be faced with a mini game that allows you to increase your score. Here you must chuck balls through hoops. Getting a combo will reward you with another flaming ball. This increases the score given for each hoop it goes through and players will also appear who run down for pitch. Hitting one of these will also increase your score. It's a pretty fun little mini game. Sure it's nothing special and is a bit simple, but it certainly changes up the speed of the gameplay quite a bit. The more rounds you win, the more team logos you will unlock to use. Each one has a little effect on the stadium you play in too, as big models of the theme of the logo appear high above you. You can also customise the logo's colour and change the sound of your team's voice. There isn't a massive selection of logos to choose from here, but there's a decent amount. There is a practice area too. Here you can test your throwing skills and also adjust your height and throwing strength. It's basically like a virtual options area where you can instantly see how much effect your changes have made to the game. It's a great little addition for fine tuning your experience. The game has received a new mode since its initial release, which is called Head to Head. This is a couch versus mode. One person plays as one team and obviously the other person plays as the other team. The TV player defends and the VR player attacks. It is quite fun and is a great addition, considering the game really has only one other mode, but the main issue here is that both players do alternate between using the headset and the TV quite a bit during each match. It is a bit of a hassle switching controllers throughout, but if you can look past that, 
then this new addition could keep you coming back for quite a bit. Trophy wise the game does come with a very good list, and there is a platinum up for grabs. There isn't too many here that will be hard to get, but one could be a little bit tricky, which is for winning for 7th round. The rounds do get pretty hard the further you get into the game. Overall though, it is a very good trophy list, which rewards you for playing better in every part of the game. When I first launched the game, and I was straight away presented with the team's formations, I thought, oh no, where do I begin? But after my first match, I really had learnt everything that I really needed too. So if you're like me, and don't know much about the actual sport at all, rest assured, this game is extremely easy to get into. The setup of this game is extremely arcade-like, so it does make it a game more suited to the casual gamer, rather than a full-on sports fan. The fact that there is really only one main mode tied to the single player here, does make it a game more suited for people who enjoy trying to best their last score. It can have quite an addictive element to it, but I can see some people getting a little bit annoyed with the AI controlled teammates. Overall, there are some frustrating moments here, like when an AI teammate doesn't quite reach one of your throws, but on the other hand, if they do catch it, and then start a massive run attempting to get a touchdown, it does get you cheering them on. It feels like you're actually watching a sports game on the TV. The game is very exciting during these moments. Although this isn't really a traditional sports game, it's still a very high quality one, and it is great for practicing your VR throwing skills. I hope you found this review helpful, especially with my little knowledge on the real life sport itself. It was a bit of an intimidating one to tackle. <laughs> Get it? Tackle? Okay, I'll go now. Bye!